Hey, what's up team? How's it going? Welcome to today's video and welcome to Combat Ready HQ. We're looking at a new video. Check out the original video from Forces News. It's the Dragonfly. The Dragonfire, the Royal Navy warship to be fitted with laser weapon in 2027. So I did a video on this uh, a couple of months back. They tested these laser weapons for the first time. Um, less than £10 per shot, but we didn't know any more on it. All we know is that they were tested it and they were looking to fit them to the Royal Navy warships, um, basically to counteract and attack drones because they're such a big threat now. Uh, we now have a date, which is 2027, so we'll get into the video to learn a little bit more about this. I did say I'll try and keep you updated with this. So, as always, make sure you subscribe and like to the channel so you can stay updated with the latest videos and content. And as always, comment below what your thoughts are. Check out our free Instagram, join the community at our free Discord. But let's get into it. For the military, it opens up a whole new world of weaponry, no longer the stuff of sci-fi. Directed energy weapons will soon be a familiar sight on Royal Navy ships. After the MOD announced it's accelerating its £100 million laser weapons programme and introducing them to the front line in 2027, five years ahead of schedule. Targeting is, is done very, very accurately. We're looking to target something about the size of a £1 coin you know, at X kilometres range. Um, once the pointing and tracking system has locked up that aim point on the target, the laser fires uh, and the laser energy is then focused on that, on that point. And the special thing about laser weapon systems uh, is the ability to then hold that aim point and focus all that energy onto the target. The better you're able to do that, the faster you achieve the effect on the target as well. So you, you burn through the outer casing, you affect you know, what's inside, um, you know, and ultimately you achieve the effect on the target that you want. This was Dragonfire in action on a test firing in the Hebrides earlier this year. And this is the damage it can do on display at DSTL. Burnt it, melted it. The military's technology research centre at Porton Down, some of the targets they've tested it on, from melted drones and sheets of steel to 120 millimetre mortar shells, the casing turned to molten metal. A huge amount of hard work, lots of engineers, lots of DSTL scientists, uh, and we got to the point that we demonstrated the capability. So taking raw electrical power, squeezing it down to create a laser beam, and then critically being able to target it in quite a complex environment. Um, so it's absolutely accurate, and therefore all that power ends up on the target. It's a game changer. Uh, this, this is a revolutionary step in terms of capability. From Ukraine to the Red Sea, UAVs are an increasing threat in the battle space. Off the coast of Yemen, HMS Diamond and HMS Richmond have both shot down Houthi attack drones using conventional missiles. In the future, though, that could well be a job for Dragonfire. This potentially provides us an opportunity to lower the cost per shot um, compared to traditional interceptor missiles, which are sophisticated. Um, and that allows us to retain those more sophisticated missiles for the more challenging threats we face. One of the constraints we face is the size of uh, the silo on a ship that limits the number of missiles that we can carry, whereas a weapon system like LaserDew provides an unlimited um, intercept op opportunity at potentially much lower cost as well. Research into the military applications of laser technology go back to the 1980s, and of course the UK isn't the only one doing this. This was the US Navy ship USS Portland back in 2020, using a 150 kilowatt laser to take down a drone. The UK has played catch up, but has now become a world leader in this technology. The big step change which has enabled us to, to do this is actually in the laser source itself, where we generate the laser, we're now getting up to these very high powers. And the techniques to actually enable you to have a very high power um, and high quality beam because you need both to defeat a target. And it's how you join those bit, those, create that beam in the first place. And then it comes out through the aperture on the beam director. It's to reflect off the target. And we use the fire aperture there to actually analyze the return, to play games with or fine tune that output beam, which now makes it a much more effective and more relevant weapon for the, uh, the Navy and the Army. Craziness, look. Star Wars, Star Wars shit. It's not quite lasers firing, 
but man to think when I joined the army, I didn't even think about laser weapons. Um, you know, you had your little pen point lasers, and now we've got actual laser weapons taking out drones. But then when I joined, I didn't even think about drones. Um, but to think that actual and lasers are going to be fitted to ships, you know, possibly vehicles as well in the future. You know, like I said, the British Army could use this for sure. Uh, and it's going to save a lot of money. It's going to cost a lot of R&D um, and to build them and to get the units in place. But once you're using them, it's going to be so much cheaper than buying a sophisticated missile, like they said, um, at thousands, if not millions pound per shot. In the years ahead, like all tech, Dragonfire is likely to become more compact and then to use with the Army and the RAF. Yes, right. The decision to accelerate delivery, says the MOD, has been made possible by its new, more streamlined procurement model. A system it promises will, in future, deliver weapons like Dragonfire to the front line much faster. Simon Newton, Forces News, Porton Down. Well, I don't just think the process has been sped up just because obviously it's a lot smaller and procurement's easier. I think they've really obviously since Ukraine and Russia, the threats of drones uh, and then obviously what's been happening in the Red Sea, you know, they're having to take out drones and it's, you know, Houthi drones. And it's costing so much. So they've most probably gone back to them and said, look, how much sooner could you bring this in? Because drones are becoming cheaper to purchase. They're becoming um, not sort of a lot more ready um, for any sort of nation now with, you know, allies supplying each other. Uh, and drones are a lot cheaper, but the missiles are just too expensive. You know, look at the Afghan and Iraq war. They cost billions and billions. Can we really afford with what's going on, you know, Russia, Ukraine, the Middle East, the Red Sea, to keep firing these missiles. No, we can't. We really can't. So if the technology's there and they've tested it and it's working, okay, can we speed up the process to get it out? Um, and it's great to see that we are advancing in technology. Like I said, I think Britain are doing really well with advancing in technology, but they need to sort that budget out. They need to purchase the correct equipment. And this is something I think is actually correct and they're doing well in. Uh, and it, they're making the right choice in purchasing. So well done. Uh, brilliant to see. Can't believe we've gone from a couple of months back, a month back, to testing, to seeing the fire shop secretly released, I think it was. And to th there we've got a date, 2027, openly talking about it a lot more. Um, it's happening, it's coming. Uh, and it's pretty much 100% reliable by the looks of it. Obviously, it's going to have its teething issues, but we will see. Really looking forward to seeing where this actually goes and what's going to come of it. Uh, let us know what your thoughts are. What do you think? Uh, do you think it's a good idea? Is it bad? Why is it bad? Um, I think it's good. Do you think you know it is really going to be cost effective once they've done all the R&D, they've been built and purchased? Hopefully we don't get overcharged like we normally do. You know, do you think one day we could see this on the Ajax or the Boxer? Uh, you, know, you know, drones aren't just a threat out at sea, they are a threat on land. You know, and it's quite hard to shoot down a drone. So it's something I think we could see on the Ajax or the box or any other type of vehicle. Maybe one day in years to come, if you know, you'd see a bug carrying it on his back. Um, you're a, you know, your machine gunner uh, uh, and, and your standard sort of rifleman and then you have your laserman. But we don't know. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please let us know what your thoughts are and I'll see you soon.